another episode of Jay Leno's Garage. We're here at the uh, Rodeo Concourse with Bruce Meyer, sort of the founding member, the guy who certainly puts this whole thing together. If you're into cars at all, you know Bruce. He's a world-famous car collector, and he's got... Uh, well, you see him at the Mealy Mealy. I mean, he's just, he's just everywhere in the car world. And you're the brains behind this, and you're a terrific job. Yeah, well, thanks. Well, hey, my neighbor and good friend Jay, I'm so glad you're here. Well, this is world-famous Rodeo Drive, the fashion right. capital. Right. And we figured, what better place than to show off what's fashionable in cars? And this year, we're kind of featuring the Jet Age cars. Right. And you're going to see a couple of really cool Jet cars. And, uh, you know, the fun thing is, you've got Pebble Beach and the ones at Lake Como and all those sort of places. But Bruce has brought those cars from around the world to here in uh, Beverly Hills. So it's nice to have these cars within two miles of my house. I love that. It's cool. Just yeah. glide yeah. down. Here. Yeah, I'm going to take a look around and show you some right now. So we're talking with Rick from the Mullen Museum. If you've been to my website before, you know Peter Mullen has got probably the greatest collection of French cars in the world. And he's got a terrific museum in Oxnard, uh, California, where they're all on display. And they brought some today. What do we have here? It's a 1938 Peugeot Dalmont, which is a very one-off car. And look at the Art Deco design here. Yep. This is fabulous. There you go. I can see that the air was much cleaner in France back in <laughs> 1938. No air cleaners, just a big screen to keep birds out of there. Little four-cylinder, what are you looking at, two liter? Two liters, yes. Yeah, two liter. They always say Germany was the birthplace of the car, but France was the nursery where all the great ideas and different designs came out. And this is a classic example of that. What a beautiful, beautiful car. Just a classic example of the Art Deco style. So exactly. well, I'll let you get some shots of it here and you can uh, drool over it. This is Ken Funk, and this is his 1969 Dodge Charger Daytona. How long have you had it? I originally got it about 20 years ago. Wow. I, I got about 20 really great muscle cars, and if you don't have a wing car, you just don't got nothing. Yeah, you have to have the wing car. Yeah. And this is a 440 with the four-speed, huh? Four-speed, 410 nice. Dana. And this wing is really massive the way it's on here, isn't it? It's steel. Yeah. I've got a great picture of this thing backed up to a fence at a race, yeah. and three guys are standing on the wing looking out, you know, with their cameras. Wow. Yeah, I mean, it's not fiberglass or anything like that. No, it's, no, right, it's right. It's really strong. Ken, it's a beautiful car. Thanks. And uh, thanks for bringing it out uh, here. Oh, yeah, my, it's, my pleasure. It's really fun to see. We're talking with Dan. This is his 1950 uh, Studebaker. Hey, that was the year I was born, so it has mm -hmm. special meaning to me. But this is a car that always couldn't tell if it was coming or going. It was pretty revolutionary styling back in the day, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Yeah. It was uh, Raymond Lowy's group that designed it. And he said, oh, Raymond Lowy did this, he huh? Was, yeah. Make it look like it's a aeroplane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you had, of course, the suicide door. This is the first year of Studebaker automatic transmission. This yeah. was April 1950. Two speed or three? Three. Oh, it is a three speed. Well, a lot of room inside. Nice dashboard, nice open area here. Well, thanks for preserving this car. You know, you don't see many of these old Studebakers. Dan, thank you very much. I got a destination, and I'm on my way. Talking with Eric Breslow. He owns this beautiful uh, 48? 1948. 1948 Tucker. One of the most iconic American automobiles of all time. Of course, a lot of us saw the movie. And well, as a mentioned. Tucker historian, how accurate was the film? You know, it was actually really accurate. Yeah. Um, you know, he was... Uh, there's hundreds of thousands of blueprints. He really wanted to build the car. Right. He wasn't, he wasn't just trying to rip people off. No, I don't he, think he, he really was. I think it was a classic case of a, a lot of times people do this. I'm using your money to help build the next car. And right. it's not that anybody's a crook. It's just that you're trying to keep everything rolling. And most designers and engineers are terrible businessmen. Right, right. And that's the classic right. case. And right. In the movie, they made it seem very sinister, but... I, I don't think it was as black and white as all that. Well, take us through the car a little bit. This was Preston Tucker's personal car? Yeah, very significant. Uh, Preston, you know, the, the company was indicted in 1948. Right. And by 1950, they were pretty much out of business. This was his personal car, his wife's uh, favorite color. This waltz blue was the color of her dress, you know, right. from the movie. You might remember that. 
Um, but he bought, had to buy this car at his own bankruptcy liquidation sale in 1950. Right. So uh, he bought the car, tinkered with it over the years, and unfortunately he passed away in 1956. Right. And by 1962 or 63, the family kind of came to a point where they needed to sell the car. Yeah. So a friend of theirs, a dear family friend of theirs, Jay Busker out of Elk Point, South Dakota, a Studebaker dealer, bought the car and had it for all these years. And, uh, 2010, three years ago, I found the car from Mr. Busker. Wow, that's yeah, quite a story. Owner. Why don't you sit in it? Let's think. Well, here's my favorite part of the Tucker, what they call the safety well. You're right. The idea being, if you think you're going to crash, you dive into that well. You have to understand, this is a time when nobody thought about safety. Right. They were just selling sexiness and all this kind of stuff. So the idea that somebody would have a car with safety features, pop out windshield, right? The windshield pop out pops windshield. out. Now these used a Franklin helicopter engine helicopter originally. Motor, correct. 335 yeah, yeah. Franklin helicopter right, motor. Right, right, right. That's right. actually, you know, in the movie they depict the Howard Hughes connection. Right. That is actually a true story that, uh, you know, Tucker was having all sorts of problems getting motors. Right. He couldn't get motors and then one day he gets this call from Howard Hughes that says, hey, you know, there's this aircraft company in Syracuse, New York called Air Cooled Motors and they're having money problems. You could probably get in there and buy them for a penny and they've got engines galore. And so he bought the company, bought the, you know, got the Franklin motor, put the water jackets on right. it to turn it to uh, water cooled, right. mounted it, you know, the opposite way. And, and there it was, he solved his motor problem with the Howard Hughes connection. Well, very nice. Beautiful, beautiful automobile. Thanks for showing it to us. Thank you, Jay. It's my pleasure. <laughs>、uh, for, and he owns one of the most iconic cars of all time. This is a car I have、uh, lusted after since I was a kid. Tell us exactly what we have here. Well, it's a, it's a design prototype that was commissioned by Chrysler. And、uh, at that time, Chrysler was using a coach building company called Kia,、right. the same one that, that built your turbine car,、right. to make all of their show cars. It was also called Gilda. Wasn't it called Gilda? Named after Rita Hayworth's、okay. character in the、okay. movie. Now, the great thing that he has done is make this car functional, which is not an easy task because up to this point, it was just a rolling piece of sculpture, really.、Right. You couldn't drive it, it had no functional. What engine did you use? It has an air research、uh, gas turbine, which is、uh, period correct, it's from the 50s. Right. And、uh, it, it uses a hydrostatic drive line.、Okay. What we wanted to do was to make the thing functional. But also make what we did reversible. Can we open up and take a look under the hood? Look at how nicely done this is. Now, what is that belt driving there? That's your. Well, that's, that, that goes from the turbine、okay. to the hydro, hydraulic unit. Gotcha. Well, you drove it in here, right? You drove it in here. How、I、cool is、in. that? Flew it in. <laughs> Thanks again. Okay, good. Tearing down the fences, coming to my senses, seeing what I really know. We're talking with Alyssa Bartacci. She is the Rolls Royce representative. Tell me about this new Wraith. Sure, so、um, it's our 2014 Wraith,、right. um, and we're super excited about it. It's definitely our fastest car yet. Under the hood, we have a V12 6.6 liter twin turbo,、right. puts out 624 horsepower. And、uh, the 0 to 60 is 4.4. God, it must be massively quiet in here. It seems like such a solid car. It's a solid car.、Um, of course, you have your double paned glass, which right, is really、right. sound buffering. And of course, you have the. the you gotta the, have the umbrella. Yeah,、yep. how does that work? So there's a button right here. Oh, there、here. it is. Okay.、Yep. And you got the hello, and you got to see this this, this headliner. The、uh, what do you call it? What do you call the headliner?、Uh, starlight headliner. Starlight headliner. This、yeah. is kind of cool. Take a look at this. It's a starlight headliner. There's stars. Oh, kind of a starry I see.、Night. It's sparkly. We're here with Leslie Kendall. He's a curator of the Peterson Museum, with probably I think the most outrageous Rolls Royce ever built, the famous Round Door car. Tell us the history of this car. Well, the history of this car begins in 1925 when it was originally bodied with Cabriolet coachwork. As it happens, in 1934, the owner of the time didn't like the coachwork very much, so he had it thrown away, and he had a company in Belgium called Gankira build this incredibly aerodynamic body for it to his specifications. It's about as Art Deco as you can possibly get. Lex, can we show them how that door operates? You bet. You bet. It opens, but not very far because、yeah. the hinges. 
are a little bit forward and yeah. it goes in the back as much as it opens in the front. Can we show how the window rolls? Look, look oh, at how the you, windows you roll. Bet. Up. How cool is that? Well, the door is really the whole deal. Leslie, thank you very much. Yeah, you're very welcome. Well, here's the car everybody's been waiting for. This is the McLaren P1. This is Marcus Koba. He's the, uh, what is your official title? The Brand manager. Brand right. manager, that's what it is. And this is uh, the first time I've seen it with the wing deployed. Uh, tell us about the car. 375 five cars built. Five, that's the total production right. run of this. And, How many um, will be coming to the States, do you know? Um, we're estimating around 130 cars. Oh, okay, yeah. very good. Now, for people who don't know, this is a, a hybrid. Your engine normally puts out, what, 727 horse? Yep. And then you get 176 horsepower with the uh, yep. electric assist. And this is pretty much what the future is going to be. I think McLaren had a, a chance to do a 10-cylinder or a 12-cylinder, but, you know, with emissions and European regulations tightening down, um, smaller engines that are more efficient and make more power, uh, I think, are, are, are the way to go. Yeah, and this is the most dramatic part of this car right yes. here, the wing. That Boy. normally sits in right. completely in here, and then depending on the speeds, it comes up right. about half this height and then tilts within... 27 degrees right. of its and current And when you're going position. for top speed, you have it all the way down, right? If you go for top speed, you basically, you, it goes up, but still, you then, yeah. then flips open. So basically, right. I can do this now because the hydraulics aren't on. This is, uh, don't do this. <laughs> right, okay. So it basically flips oh, yeah. back like this, and this is when you basically reduce the drag. It's a push of the button on the steering wheel, and all of a sudden, right. you and reduce the downforce. If you're having a picnic or something, well, this works as the key <laughs> tray. It's fantastic. You know, my biggest fear when this car came out was that it was going to be four-wheel drive with electric engines running the front wheels and the gas engine running the rear wheels and but McLaren doesn't think that way they think always in terms of just the pure driving experience and the one cool thing McLaren has done is most cars uh, generate electricity for the battery pack by using the brakes but I, I, I think McLaren realized that you lost some brake feel you lost you, yeah. lose, you lose brake feel completely. you lose brake feel completely and so consequently, they use the engine to keep, the en to keep it constantly recharged, which I think is uh, a smart way to go. Just fantastic. Very exciting car. Marcus, thank you very much. Thanks.